<clears throat> similar thing is true for uh, insulating concrete forms, and some are on display here. Uh, it's a good system and one that is gaining market share rather rapidly. Uh, they're true enough to where they can simply be stacked and filled with concrete, uh, so it's a good, good construction technique. You see some other shelters on display here, steel shelters. Most of those are mounted in the garage or some on a patio. Uh, I would urge that the shelter be accessible without going outdoors, if at all possible. If you have to go outdoors to get to the shelter, most people don't go when they should and take a greater risk of getting to the shelter in, than in staying where you are. So please, I would urge uh, paying close attention to accessibility. Uh, these two, this shelter on the right is on display here. Uh, the one on the left is, has a similar one. Bennett Steel has, Jim Giles Safe Room has a steel shelter outdoors. It's similar to this. Concrete boxes are common uh, and they can be mounted indoors or outdoors if you can get them indoors. Um, this is one example. There's another one that fits underneath the slab of the garage. You can simply cut out a section of the garage floor, excavate, mount a shelter under there, and then put a sliding door on it, and that can be located without even losing a parking space. So th that's another option available. You see this uh, community shelter displayed outdoors. I think this is good for about 39 occupants, uh, and it's a well-designed community shelter that can be set in place quickly. Another concept is simply the modular type that is finding favor in industrial plants. Uh, and again, it can be varied in size and, uh, uh, but again, I would urge accessibility as an important factor. This is a unique uh, approach. This shelter was designed primarily for construction sites or uh, uh, drilling operations, oil production, and so forth. It's movable. It's simply anchored with these uh, arms that let down and with uh, ground anchors, so it can readily be moved to a new location upon uh, desire. Mention just briefly major quality issues. Uh, using untested or inadequately tested door systems and I emphasize systems. Uh, we feel that uh, it's not uh, sufficient to test a, a, a door latch, to test a door hinge, and to test a door separately and expect any combination of those things to go together to make a, a system that's acceptable. Uh, so we insist on testing the door system and uh, not all doors or, or systems are alike. Uh, there are some producers here who are, uh, can, can guide the uh, selection of the door, uh, but it's an important element of the uh, safe room and, and an inexpensive element. Uh, improper anchoring of above ground safe rooms is a major issue. Inadequate number of doors or hatches on community safe rooms. So again, I would emphasize that uh, or inadequate shielding of openings uh, and would simply try to emphasize the point that not all things that are called a shelter are not all safe rooms are equal. Uh, there's, I think, a pretty wide vari variety or wide disparity of quality among uh, things that are offered uh, and so one needs to be uh, careful. There are a lot of misleading claims. How many times have you seen FEMA approved? Uh, FEMA does not approve shelters, but I think some producers, once they get a, a grant and receive some FEMA money, they think that FEMA has approved that shelter. Or they say NSSA certified. Uh, it may say exceeds NSSA standards, and that could be a legitimate claim if they have indeed shown that it does exceed them but uh, a lot of claims are made without that backup. Uh, exceeds FEMA or ICC standards. Another misleading claim, particularly one company, says they're a founding member of NSSA. 
they were, they're not current members. Uh, so beware of, uh, look for, if you're looking for the, the NSSA uh, verification, look at the current web page for producer members, and that is a fluid document. Uh, people go in and out. We have had to uh, suspend membership for some people for not following the uh, guidelines, and uh, so don't look at an old web page and think it's okay. Try to consult the current web page to make sure that the person is on there. <clears throat> Uh, a lot of things that can be done to promote building safety, and many have been mentioned, encourage and upgrading and enforcing building codes, educate homeowners on the merits and payoffs of improved construction. And I think one of the secrets to really improving things is to, to try to get owner-driven improvements. If, if the owner can receive any benefit, such as reduced insurance payments or something, for improved construction, and the owner starts driving the improvements, then I think we'll make progress. Uh, without that, it's a matter of simply getting by and, and meeting the uh, minimum requirements and having the building inspector sign off on it. Uh, I think we need to engage the social sciences. Uh, I think the, the technical know-how is there. We know how to build better structures. We know how to build safe rooms. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of difference, I think, between, say, the guidelines that are published and the implementation in the field. So I, uh, somehow we need to engage the, the behavioral sciences to figure out how to motivate people to take the steps that are available to them for improved safety. Uh, I think we need to offer training programs for building designers, code officials, and inspectors. Uh, this is what I just said. There, we need to narrow the disparity between available design know-how and field practice. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's somewhat redundant. Uh, need to celebrate the successes that we've had, I think. So, how do you procure a quality residential safe room? Well, we'd like to think that uh, if you can find someone with the displaying the NSSA seal, that that has been verified to be in compliance with the standard. Uh, if you can't find that, look at that checklist that's in one of your brochures. It says, how do you discern quality in a safe room uh, or a storm shelter? And ask those questions of the provider if they're not members of the National Storm Shelter Association. If they can show the reports for testing and so forth, then perhaps you have a good shelter if they ha kind of have a stare of a deer in the headlights, you better look a little further for a provider. Uh, <clears throat> and for site-built shelters, in seek a contractor with a good attitude and uh, insist that they follow the FEMA 320 designs. And use a tested door, and tested doors are listed on the Texas Tech website. Uh, and for the uh, criteria for which they were tested. In a community sa safe room, I think, seek, seek a designer with credentials. The NSSA professional member roster provides a listing of, of uh, professional people, architects and engineers who are uh, available for design of community shelters. Uh, they must have a third party review if, if it's above a given size. So you get the uh, the third party review there. Uh, <clears throat> the National Storm Shelter has an education grant. Uh, this is money growing out of Hurricane Ike. It's a generous grant, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in FEMA funds and one hundred and fifty in matching funds. That's about to break our backs, but we'll get through that. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> we're making good progress. The concept is to uh, uh, present face-to-face -face workshops, videotape one each of those, which has been done, and then the Federal Alliance for Safe Homes, or FLASH, is working with the International Code Council to transition these to uh, electronic format 
so that we'll have workshops, one general workshop, uh, half day workshop that they'll probably reduce to about 20 minutes. Uh, similar reduction for a one day workshop on residential shelters and another two day workshop on community shelters. Uh, and so I hope by the end of the year we will have those uh, ready to uh, work with and present and uh, be able to uh, make education much more readily accessible to anybody that wants it. Uh, I have opportunities for NSSA. I think we can help educate local citizens and local officials on uh, how funding such as the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program works. We still get a lot of calls from people, how do I get a grant? And it takes a while to explain the HMGP or the Predisaster Mitigation Grant Program to them. I hope we can head some of that off with the electronic programs. I uh, want to support local jurisdictions in applying and upgrading building codes, advise jurisdictions to have FEMA approved mitigation plans, and I was pleased to hear that every county in Alabama, if I understood correctly, has an approved mitigation plan that has hindered many, many communities from uh, participating because they don't have such a plan. Uh, <clears throat> Opportunities are abound for NSSA. Uh, I, we would recommend a widespread utilization of the process, be it requiring membership or not, uh, requiring uh, NSSA seal or not, but the process I think has potential. And, and I think it even has potential for other segments of the building industry. There is no stellar compliance verification process that I know of uh, in the building industry and I think that um, I think we can increase our opportunities in the community shelter area we've been minimally involved there and we can play a larger part um, I think this electronic programming will increase our information outreach economically uh, we need to develop a sustained source of funding to develop opportunities and maintain outreach programs uh, NSSA has paid no professional salaries. Uh, the entire program has been pretty much a volunteer effort uh, and thanks to some of the members who have really pitched in to help write the bylaws to enforce them to uh, uh, conduct the operation so it's a self-policing operation at this point and certainly we need to move beyond that. Uh, and find ways to respond to the public service opportunities then that are resulting from the extensive visibility and credibility that we have. Um, information sources, that, though these sources are listed on, on the, the uh, uh, brochures that you have in your packet, um, I think this, this looks to me like a picture, picture of Barack Obama uh, right after the last election. Uh, he has not attended one of our short courses, so he's not celebrating the end of the short course. But uh, this is your clue that this is the end of this presentation, uh, so you can jump for joy. <laughs>